Styles the Phenomenal AJ Styles and you're watching Red Out Live. Welcome everybody to the WWE Week in Review episode 195. This is where we go over Raw and SmackDown in a WWE action figure setup style. I'll tell you guys what happened, tell you what I thought about it, if it was good, if it was bad. We're going to start off with Monday Night Raw first. Monday Night Raw wasn't a half bad show. There was some decent action, uh, mostly in the last, the third hour of the show. The first two hours of the show were pretty mid in my opinion. Um, but we're going to jump into the entire show right now, tell you what I thought. So let's go. Opened up the show with Kevin Owens. He comes out. Looks like he's about to cut a promo. But he barely gets one word out of his mouth before JBL and Baron Corbin interrupt. Kevin Owens had a really funny little at bit that he did where he put his head on the freaking turnbuckle for at least like a minute as JBL and Corbin were just spewing out garbage out of their mouths. Kevin Owens was just like, oh my god, this is so stupid. He puts his head right on the turnbuckle right there and he's just like, oh my god. But anyways, it turns into a match. Obviously, Kevin challenges Baron Corbin and then... They have a one-on-one -on -one match. It wasn't too bad. Kevin Owens beats Baron Corbin with the stunner. And then right after the match, the Usos and Solo Sokoa, they try to take out Kevin Owens right after he beat Baron Corbin. They jump the barricade. Here come the Usos. Here comes Solo. But then Kevin Owens is able to defend him off with freaking Mike Rome's shoe. He grabbed Mike Rome's shoe. I was wondering what it was at first, but, th but then I saw an Instagram post. And then he it showed him taking off the shoe of Mike Rome, and he used it to hit Solo, I believe, in the head. And then and he fended him off with a steel chair after he used the shoe. And then Kevin Owens actually reigned supreme against the bloodline in the beginning of the show. And then Pierce came out to settle things down, you know, get the bloodline out of there. And then he made a couple matches for later in the night that I will talk about. Right after that, they cut to the commentators. And then they're basically just talking about things that are going to happen later in the show. And then Alexa Bliss hops on the announcer's desk randomly, just like this. And she's like, oh, I'm coming after Bianca. This is nothing compared to what I'm going to do in the future. Basically just talking about Bianca Belair. And then Uncle Howdy comes out. He makes his presence felt, only stays on the entrance stage though, and Alexa Bliss is on the announce desk, so they're pretty far apart, and then Alexa Bliss is like, I'm the true, like, leader, like, I'm more this than Uncle Howdy, and then Uncle Howdy basically comes out and basically challenges her, like, power that she thinks she has, so I'm like, eh, this is kind of dumb, I would have preferred, like, a face-to-face -face altercation between them instead of Uncle Howdy on the entrance stage, Alexa Bliss on the announce desk, and then they cut to commercial, I thought that was pretty goofy. Uh, moving over here, it was Bailey going one-on-one -on -one with Meechin, Mia Yim. Like, we need to get this straight. Is she Meechin or is she Mia Yim? Like, which one are we calling her? I feel like they call her Mia Yim one week and then Meechin the next. It's like, dude, what is going on with that? But anyways, it was Meechin going up against Bailey one-on-one. -on -one. Bailey gave Dakota Kai and Eosky the night off, told him to leave the ringside area. She's got this. And she did. She pinned, uh... Ra not Raquel, uh, Mia Yim, one, two, three, by using the ropes. Pretty sketchy way to win a match. Uh, but of course, the ref didn't see it, so Bailey picks up the victory. And then later in the night, they damage control. They all attack Mia Yim backstage to get a little more payback for whatever she did. I mean, I don't even know. Damage control is just taking care of business, I guess. Coming over here is Seth Rollins and Austin Theory yet again having another amazing promo between themselves. Austin Theory pointing out that Seth Rollins limped out of the arena last week after he beat him in a match. Match, of course, because the rumor was that Seth Rollins had hurt his knee, which he did, but he didn't need the crutches that he came out with. He said, yes, my knee's not 100%. But I could still walk on it. So you got to think that Seth's going to be having a match with Theory in the future for that United States Championship. But before they could get really any more words out, Bobby Lashley comes out. Bobby Lashley's back from being fired. He comes out and he basically just charges the ring. Walks right past Seth Rollins. Goes into the ring and spears Austin Theory. Just settling some unfinished business between them. Uh, because, I, of course, Bobby Lashley got fired due to Austin Theory. Because Adam Pearce is like, you're fired. Get out of here. I'm sick of this. Because he was touching a bunch of officials and everything everything. Um, but yeah, he just spears Austin Theory. So what are they going to do? Are they going to do a triple threat match again? Or are they going to do one-on-one -on -one between Lashley and Theory? Or uh, what are they going to do? I think it's just going to be another triple threat match. I could see that happening. Also, I do want to mention Bobby Lashley did get confronted by MVP backstage and MVP was like, hey, my number's still the same. Oh, obviously like, hey, you want to revamp the Hurt business? Because I guess MVP also talked to Cedric Alexander and Shelton Benjamin to get them in a tag team match for later in the night, which was sort of successful, but not really. But it was good to see them back together. But yeah, MVP looking to revamp the Hurt Business. Over here is Rhea Ripley going one-on-one -on -one with Candice LeRae. This was a domination. That's all I really have to say. Literally, Candice LeRae didn't get any offense in this match. Crazy. Rhea Ripley slams her face in the barricade, hits the riptide in the end to pick up the victory over Candice LeRae. Um, one, two, three. Not too bad. Moving over here, Cody Rhodes did have another little promo segment 
he wasn't out there. It was just a little video package of him recuperating, getting surgery, the little rehab that he started, and then it says to be continued. So basically, they're just signifying that he's going to win the Royal Rumble, basically. Next match, it was Dolph Ziggler going one-on-one -on -one with Solo Sokoa. Dolph Ziggler wants, of course, a little revenge over Solo after what he'd been doing, terrorizing the locker room, beating everybody up. Dolph's like, I need this match. He declined a tag team match in the turmoil match later in the night with Mustafa Ali because he wanted this match so bad. It was one-on-one, -on -one, pretty decent. Dolph always puts people over. I feel like he does amazing jobs. Even when he has to lose a match, he always makes his opponent look so dang good. Um, in the end, basically, Soko Solo Sokoa looks for sort of like a pop-up powerbomb, but he hits a um, Samoan spike in the in the process. I thought it was wicked. Pins Dolph Ziggler, one, two, three, but Dolph Ziggler, this wasn't a cakewalk. Dolph Ziggler hit the zigzag. I thought he had Solo for a second, but I knew Solo was going to pin, I knew Solo was going to be pinning Dolph Ziggler. No, ain't no way Dolph is going to pin Solo Sokoa. Even though I love Dolph Ziggler and I think he deserves more, they should use him well they have him, but um, this was still not bad. It was an episode of Miz TV. Miz, special guests, The Judgment Day, basically just talking to Dominic about his jail time. Dominic just trying to act hard out there with a freaking bandana and a flannel and glasses. I thought it was goofy. I thought it was definitely more funny than last week with Dominic. And they started like getting close to The Miz, like about to beat him up after Miz said, well, I heard from sources that you were only in a county jail for an hour or two. And then they're like, what, what, what? Because they were just trying to make Dominic look hard. Um, but then it jumped right into our gauntlet match our main event it was a tag team turmoil match to determine who's going to be facing the undisputed tag team champions of the usos in the future it was the club cedric alexander and Shelton benjamin the alpha academy the street profits and the judgment day all in a turmoil match and this was great i loved this match dude um it started off with the judgment day and the club judgment day beat the club and then it went to Shelton and Cedric. Judgment Day beat Shelton and Cedric. It was great to see them back in the ring, though. I love this tag team. I think they're really good. They just need matching gear. Um, and then, of course, it jumped to Shoosh, Shoosh, please. Uh, Chad Gable and Otis. Judgment Day beat them. And then the Judgment Day's last opponents was the Street Profits. The Street Profits were the last opponents of the Judgment Day. And this was the best the Street Profits have looked, in my opinion. Like, I've never really been the biggest fan of the Street Profits, but this showing in this match was amazing from Dawkins and Ford. This was an amazing showing from them. Oh my goodness. I thought they had them for sure. I thought they had the Judgment Day, but they didn't. The match started off with Finn Balor, but he got injured from a splash from Otis in the match prior. So they had to take out Finn Balor and they put Dominic in there with Damian Priest. Damian Priest was in the ring for 50 minutes, but yeah, he got Dominic instead of Balor because Balor was injured. And then they had to face the Street Profits and it was amazing. In the end, it looked like freaking Montez Ford was on such a roll. He could not be stopped but then Dominic was able to pin Montez Ford with a, some help from the ropes just like Bailey did earlier in the show and Rhea Ripley was holding down his feet there was no way Montez Ford was kicking out the Judgment Day are going to be facing the Usos for the Undisputed Tag Team Championships in the future and I'm excited Judgment Day Bloodline that is awesome dude I'm really into that and I'm excited to see where it's going to go uh, is this match going to be at the Royal Rumble is it going to be on an episode of Raw I hope this is a Royal Rumble match this definitely deserves Royal Rumble like match like card. It's going to be more than likely Damian Priest and Finn Balor versus the Usos, not Dominic. Uh, but I am looking forward to it. It's going to be very good. That was Monday Night Raw in a nutshell. You guys can let me know what you guys thought about Raw down in the comments down below. In my opinion, I thought it was a pretty weak show besides the gauntlet turmoil match, the uh, tag team match in the end. I really enjoyed that match. Really, really did. Um, and I'm excited to see Judgment Day versus the Usos. So in the end, I'm going to give the show a solid 2 out of 5. Definitely doesn't deserve a 3. Jumping into SmackDown, our opening match, it was Braun Strowman. Going up against Gunther, Gunther for the Intercontinental Championship. What a way to open the show with an Intercontinental Championship one-on-one -on -one match. Ludwig and Giovanni Vinci sort of made their presence felt a little bit in this match by targeting the left arm of Braun Strowman, which Gunther was working over the entire match, which I thought was pretty cool. Give everything a something to pay attention to, like, oh my gosh, Braun's left arm, will he be able to hold up? He wasn't! Braun did show some amazing feats of strength by picking up Gunther with literally one arm and also Gunther doing a powerbomb to Braun Strowman to finish the match right off, to the right off the top rope to the mat. One, two, three. 
Gunther picks up the victory. I couldn't believe it. I was like, oh my gosh. I mean, I knew Gunther was going to retain, but I thought for sure maybe Ludwig or Giovanni Vinci were going to pose more as a factor in that win. But yeah, Gunther basically, in my opinion, beat Braun Strowman pretty freaking clean. I'm not even going to lie. It was pretty clean in my opinion. As far as the opener goes, I thought this was a solid match to open the show, and I pleasantly enjoyed it. Moving over here, it was Zia Lee going one-on-one -on -one with Tegan Knox, and basically all I really have to say about this is it was a match, nothing special. Special. Tegan Knox was able to hit the shiniest wizard, I believe it's called, to pick up the victory over Xia Li. Nothing crazy. I wasn't really into it. Moving over here, it was Rey Mysterio coming out, talking about how his Merry Christmas, his Christmas was spoiled by his own son, Dominic. And of course, he got interrupted by Karrion Cross as Rey was talking about Dominic. And then Karrion Cross comes out and basically just insults Rey Mysterio as a father, telling him that he failed as a father, that Dominic, he, he didn't raise him right and all this and that and then Ray got sick and tired of hearing it. He threw the first punch, but it didn't end well. Karen Cross was able to lock in the cross jacket after Scarlet grabbed the foot of Ray Mysterio and distracted him a little bit. And then locked him in the cross jacket. And then uh, Scarlet holds up the uh, the card with Ray Mysterio's face on it, showing that he is the next victim. That's actually a really cool sight with those figures. Uh, as far as this Karen Cross Ray Mysterio rivalry goes, the match ought to be good. Um, this wasn't too bad, just not that entertaining in my opinion. Moving over here, Sonya Deville demanded Adam Pearce give her a rematch match for the SmackDown Miss Championship against Charlotte. Adam Pearce declined, and then Sonya Deville took it in her own hands to attack Charlotte backstage and somehow make Charlotte want to give her a rematch, which I don't know why they would give Sonya a rematch. This is probably going to be our Royal Rumble one-on-one -on -one match here that we're going to see for the SmackDown Miss Championship, and I'm not looking forward to it. We saw it last week on SmackDown. We don't need it again. Moving over here, it was Bray Wyatt, the Eater of Worlds. This was a very reminiscent Bray Wyatt that we saw here. Calling back from a lot of stuff in the Wyatt family. You know, when they used to do that. And then he's, he said at the end of his promo, he's like, we're here. I'm like, we're? Who? You? Or somebody else? I'm like, what? Um, No no really crazy mentions of Uncle Howdy. Of course he mentioned him. He's like, I am Uncle Howdy. I am this. I'm like, wait, you're Uncle Howdy? Wait, what? Um, So like this was a little confusing of a promo, but he did say the past is what made you. Do not forget about your past or something like that. So maybe we're going to see more of a classic Bray Wyatt here moving into the future. Uh, I don't know, but I'm all for it. I really enjoy his promos and I'm always into him every single time. Moving over here is Liv Morgan going one-on-one -on -one with Raquel Rodriguez. Raquel Rodriguez showing a little different phase, a little different face backstage. Liv Morgan sort of got in her face and Raquel Rodriguez was like, people around here keep just forgetting how big and strong I am. I'm one of the strongest on the division. Liv Morgan literally st straight up slaps her across the face. They have a match later in the show and Liv Morgan takes the L? What? She was looking for a wicked move off the top rope. Raquel gets off the table and just like, nah, that ain't happening. Gets in the ring, sort of does like a power bomb, like a power bomb maneuver to Liv Morgan, something like that. And she pins Liv Morgan one, two, three. I'm like, eh, that was kind of lame. Raquel was my pick for the Royal Rumble, but not anymore. You guys will see my pick in the prediction video. I got my picks for both the men's and the women's Royal Rumble for this year, and I'm excited to share them with you in the prediction video. Moving over here to our main event, it was Kevin Owens going one on one with Sami Zayn. This match was amazing. Well anticipated match. Made by the tribal chief, Roman Reigns. Roman Reigns gave Sami Zayn the task of taking care of business, that being Kevin Owens. Taking care of the problem, which was Kevin Owens. And this was an amazing match. A lot of callbacks, a lot of great stuff between this two. It just reminded me of a straight-up fight between two brothers in the ring. It was great. Sami Zayn was looking for the Halula kick. He was ready to take out Kevin. And I'm like, oh my god, Sami Zayn's about to win. Sami Zayn's about to win. Usos, Solo Sokoa, they rush the ring. They attack Kevin Owens. Ding, 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 ding bell rings. Kevin Owens is like, what in the heck just happened? Kevin Owens is like, are you kidding me? I was about to beat him with the Halula kick. I was about to take care of business. I was about to take care of the thing that the tribal chief put me on the quest to do. And the Usos were like, don't worry, man. We got your back. The Usos were all in it solo. They sent him through the debt. They sent Kevin Owens through the announce desk with a wicked splash. Literally, Solo Sokoa jumped from the timekeeper's area into the announce desk. That was pretty impressive. And then they stood over Kevin Owens' body. But you could just tell on the face of Sami Zayn, he was not having it. He's like, you've got to be kidding me. I was about to win that match. You've got to be kidding me. Like, yeah, he jumped into kayfabe. He's like, yeah, you know, I'll throw up the one with the Usos. But, like, you could just tell he was not feeling this, whatever the Usos were trying to do. And so they spoiled the match because Kevin Owens technically won because it was a disqualification. They attacked him. I love it. And I almost guarantee it's going to be Sami Zayn and Kevin Owens that dethrone the Usos for the tag titles. Or at least one set of them. The SmackDown, Raw, whatever. Uh, but yeah, guys, that was SmackDown, Raw, setup style SmackDown this week. I'm going to give a solid... You know what? I'm going to give it a 3 out of 5. 
Uh, three out of five here for SmackDown. I thought it was a decent show. A lot of boring stuff, though. I'm not going to lie. But there was a lot of good stuff. It was sort of right in the middle there. Three out of five here for SmackDown. You guys let me know your ratings down in the comments down below for Monday Night Raw and SmackDown. And I really hope you guys enjoyed this week in review. I'll see you guys later. Bretto Live! And also, stay tuned for the new Top Picks reviews dropping soon. Out!